Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I will be discussing the different types of sprint resetting, the mechanics behind them, and how to actually sprint reset, along with some helpful tips at the end. Now, the entire purpose of this video is to be as concise and as helpful to you as possible while still telling all the information I feel necessary. Hence, I've put in some timestamps in the description for the different segments of the video, and although I do implore you to check out the entire video, feel absolutely free to skip around using the timestamps so that you only get the information that you want. Also, check out the description for any further information or questions, and if your query isn't listed, then make sure to just comment. Without any further ado, enjoy the video. Starting out with the basics, a combo is when you get multiple hits on your opponent without them hitting you in return. Because hit range is the same for all players involved, or at least theoretically because cheaters do exist, for combos to exist there needs to be a reliable way to make it harder for the other player to hit you. This can be done by many, many strategies, one of which is the topic of this video, which is sprint resetting. Sprint resetting is easily the most necessary skill to master in PvP. There's absolutely no way that you'll be able to keep up with the other players if you don't know how to do it properly. Now there are two prongs of usefulness to sprint resetting. The first being the control you will have over your movement in the forwards and backwards directions so that you can stay far enough away from your opponent without actually being hit by them. And secondly, so that you can deal as much knockback as possible. There will be an in-depth reason as to why dealing more knockback is important in the next section of the video. So this is the part of the video that has the most mathy and Cody stuff in it by far, which is obviously a little bit boring to most people, or at least most of the people who watched my tutorial on riding. But in my opinion, it's actually the most important part of the video. I've always found that fully understanding how something operates is the best way to make personal decisions on how to go about practicing. My best teachers have always explained the reasoning behind something rather than telling me to memorize it at the surface level, which is exactly what I'm trying to do here. If you don't want to watch it though, I completely understand. Just like pretty much all techniques in PvP, sprint resetting is, in part, a way to manipulate latency, which is the time it takes information that is calculated on your computer to get to your opponent's computer in your favor. I'll link a video in the description to explain latency and movement advantage, which may be my rotting tutorial as it has an explanation in it, or maybe a dedicated video on the subject if I ever get around to making one, but if you don't want to go watch another video, then here's a very basic explanation of it. Here's the position of your opponent, who is sitting still, here's your position on your screen, and here's your position on your opponent's screen. The time it takes information to travel from your computer to your opponent's computer causes you to actually look farther away from him on his screen, but you'll be closer to him on yours. I'll call this movement advantage. Now, this is only true for your direction of movement, so if you're moving backwards, you'll actually be farther away from your opponent on your screen than on his screen. This movement advantage gets more and more exaggerated the faster you move. The primary way that sprint resetting works is through dealing more knockback to your opponent, which manipulates their movement advantage. So firstly, this is a clip where I hit this poor villager only once, just as a control group to see how much knockback is taken on the first hit. The second clip I hit the villager twice, but without sprint resetting before the second hit. As you can see, I deal a ton of KB on the first hit, but then on the second hit, he does not go nearly as far. However, in this clip, I reset my sprint, which in this case I'm W tapping before each hit. And as you can see, on the first hit he goes flying, but the difference is, is that on the succeeding hit he also goes flying. So by this evidence, we can say that you will deal more knockback if you sprint reset before each hit. So, just to make it easier to visualize all of this, here are some different scenarios that utilize different player movement speeds and directions, and hence different movement advantages. Let's take the scenario where both of these players, I'll call them Jack and Jill, are moving toward each other and hence in opposite directions at the same speed. Both have equal movement advantages in their respective direction of movement, as represented by the screen arrow, and therefore there is no net movement advantage. No player has an advantage in reach over the other. In the second scenario, both are moving at the same speed in the same direction. Jill is closer to Jack on her screen than on Jack's screen, but Jack is farther away from Jill on his screen. 
This makes Jill be able to hit Jack from way farther than it looks like she should be able to. In this third scenario, both players are moving away from each other but at different speeds. Because Jill is moving faster than Jack, she has more of a movement advantage. However, this advantage is not favorable to her because it is in the opposite direction and makes Jack seem farther away on her screen than on his screen. So Jack will be able to hit Jill when she can't hit Jack. Sprint resetting is basically the third scenario. You making your opponent take more knockback means that they will be moving away from you faster, making their bad movement advantage greater so that you can hit them when they can't hit you. Now that you know the basic idea behind sprint resetting, here's a list of the main ways to pull it off along with the pros and cons so you can figure out which is best for you. I don't know each of your skill levels and what you're good at, so you'll have to make personal decisions on which to learn. Go on. The first and easily the most popular method I'll be discussing is W tapping. Now one great thing about W tapping is that it's pretty easy to get good at as the only button you're actually using is the same button it's already used to move forward. You don't need to put a ton of extra thought into it which makes it great for beginners, but it's also good enough so that it's widely used throughout all skill levels. It's also very effective at controlling movement, because it's just one basic input and you control when you stop rather than moving more slowly. A couple of downsides to this method though is that it's basically known by everyone, so it doesn't really make you look special when you use it, as it's more of a necessity than an extra, and it's pretty much the jack of all trades, not amazing in one category, but pretty good in all of them. Secondly, there's S-tapping. Now, S-tapping provides control over movement that is just second to none. If you combine it with good strafing patterns, it feels like you're dancing around your opponent. You also get crazy hits on your opponent, and honestly looks like you're cheating if you can pull it off well. However, a problem with it is that it's the most difficult to do out of all of these, so learn it after you have a good mental map of how close you need to be to someone, and a good mental timer of how long hit cooldowns are. It can also be really costly if you mess it up. If someone hits you when you're going backwards, you'll take way more knockback, and then they can get a combo on you pretty easily. Thirdly, there's block hitting. Now some nice things about it are that it's just very easy to do as you just have to focus on one input just like W tapping, but I would say that it is a bit harder because the input is not your movement key. Easily the biggest advantage to block hitting is that you take 50% less damage if you're hit while blocking, so it's pretty safe for you if you mess up. You're also not put as much of a disadvantage if you get hit while doing it because blocking only slows your movement, so you'll take less knockback if you get hit. It's just a very safe method in general. Now, one problem with it is that it's not nearly as good at controlling movement as W tapping or S tapping because you only slow yourself down rather than completely stopping your movement. Lastly, there's shift tapping. Now, I'm not going to say that I don't like this method, but you'll know what I'm thinking when I say that there's basically no pros to this method over the other methods. It has the exact same big con as block hitting that you have less control over your movement speed, but without the big pro of it, which is that you take less damage. You also look dumb while doing it. I guess if you find it to be the most comfortable for you, then it gets the job done. It's pretty easy to understand how to do the skill just by the name. Just tap W or tap S or tap Shift or block it but this can be very easily misunderstood. I've seen so many people who just spam whichever method they're using, which does, I suppose, reset your sprint every time you hit someone because you're bound to do it in between hits if you're spamming, but it just makes your movement so slow and so predictable. If you spam, you'll just be tossed around because you put yourself at such an inherent disadvantage. The best way to do it is to reset your sprint once between each hit. You hit them, then sprint reset, hit them again, sprint reset, etc. In my opinion though, the best time to sprint reset is right after you get a hit so you have more time to judge how much you need to slow down your movement, but honestly as long as you sprint reset before each hit you'll get the job done. Although I think it is best to get into a certain rhythm so that it becomes muscle memory to you. For W tapping, all you do is let go of the W key and then press it again. The length of the W tap, or the amount of time that you let the W key go, depends on how far you want to be away from your opponent. If you find that your opponent is too close to you, let go of the key for longer, but if you think that you're too far away, hardly let go at all. As long as you let go of the key, at some point you have completed the sprint reset and all the rest is just movement control. 
For S-tapping, there are two different methods. The first is where you don't let go of the W key at all, but you kind of bend your finger back so it's hitting both the S and W keys at the same time. It works in a very similar way to W-tapping, but you just slow down more quickly. The second way is to take your finger completely off of the W key, quickly press the S key, then press the W key again. This makes it so that you're moving backwards for a split second. The latter method has a higher risk, higher reward, and is more difficult to pull off, but both yield similar results. Both of them have similar timings to W tapping as well. The longer you keep your finger on the S key, the more you will distance yourself from your opponent. For shift tapping and block hitting, it's pretty much the same story, except you may need to hold the key for a little longer because you move more quickly while doing it than the other methods, but all in all, it's pretty similar. There are other methods like this eat tapping as I dubbed it, but honestly they're not nearly as good as the main ones that I already went over. In general, as long as you stop a sprint and then start sprinting again, you've completed a sprint reset. It doesn't matter how you do it. Finally, here are some little things that I've picked up along the way that may end up helping you in some way. Firstly, I've always found it easiest to begin a combo by W tapping or block hitting because of their versatility, and then as you get one or two hits into the combo, you can switch to whichever method you want to use. S tapping just has far too much room for error. Being able to execute something with that small of a margin for error requires some sort of predictability, and that predictability just isn't there for the first few hits of a fight. The succeeding hits are quite predictable though, so if you are S tapping, use it after you start the combo. Secondly, there's a method of W tapping that you just barely tap the W key after each hit and you basically move at a snail's pace toward your opponent. This is usually great on practice servers because they have their knockback toned down a ton and once you get used to the knockback on the server that you're playing on, you can probably do it without a problem. I found that S tapping is amazing for rod PvP. As I was saying earlier, the first few hits of a combo can be fairly unpredictable, which is one of the downsides of S-tapping, but in UHD style PvP, those first few hits are done by a rod. You can use frequent S-tapping along with your rod to keep your opponent at exactly 3 blocks and just dance around them. By the way, if you want to learn how to rod, I'll leave a link to a previous video of mine in the description that outlines that skill. Lastly, for S-tapping a lot of the times, I like to do this weird circular strafe, which involves letting go of the W key, then pressing A, S, and D, in that order, or I guess vice versa, to make a circular motion. It may be purely psychological, but play around with it a bit. It's kind of fun. I see you made it to the end, so thanks for watching all the way through. This video has been quite a long time in the making. As you can see, the B-roll gameplay is from all the way back in February, and I'm even using some mods that aren't allowed on Hypixel anymore, which is kind of funny. Anyways, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye!